Welcome back, guys. Uh, we're a little off schedule, and we're actually out in the sun today, which is something to enjoy. Uh, make sure, guys, if you do like what I'm doing, that you make sure to actually like the videos. Make sure to subscribe. Uh, you know, comment something that, that you might think about or what you do for your morning walks or just, just anything for your health overall. So uh, we are dialing in on a format a little bit. I've kind of just been... I say uploading videos, which I don't think is at all a bad thing. Uh, but just thinking about a format for helpfulness for you guys, um, knowing what to expect on, on, on the format of the videos, and then getting into some of the health and wellness topics uh, that I would like to talk about a little bit more. I can create some more. Uh, content, Instagram, uh, shorts, reels, things like that, so that I uh, have some uh, more helpful, digestible pieces of content. Um, I also want to make sure, too, that uh, <clears throat> I realize not everyone's going to be able to do the 40-minute uh, morning walks. Uh, so, you know, I always preach the 3 by 15 guys, so... Um, Whenever you see me doing that, that is not a requirement of anybody. I just uh, like to get a big chunk of mine done first. Uh, it also is because I am at uh, right in between level two and three of uh, my walking recommendations. I, I, I like people to get to six to eight first, just to, six to eight thousand steps a day first, which is totally doable with the three by fifteen. However. Uh, when you start getting up into the eight, 10,000 plus, you do need to have one good hefty walk in there. So, um, and I think it's best to just go ahead and knock that guy out in the morning. Low insulin uh, scenario, low blood sugar scenarios so that uh, fat oxidation can occur. So, um, speaking of, I did not take my yon bean and I did not really take any caffeine this morning. Um, but that's okay, because that stuff isn't necessarily required in any way. You'll still get good effects from that. I'll wait for a car here. But anyways, dialing in on the format. So I think what we're going to do is our monologues uh, are going to be around the 15-minute mark to help you guys simula simulate your 15 minutes of walking. Uh, and then from there, uh, I think I'm going to break out into some more pre-planned style of, uh, of topics. Uh, even if I do end up rambling a little bit on them, uh, I am going to have some pre-planned topics that I, that I plan to talk about. Um, so uh, one thing also that I am going to do as a uh, consistent reminder is things on routine and what I am going to suggest for most people to, to do. Um, so the kind of... Uh, you can always be able to skip those early in the video um, because I should be done with it in, in a minute or two. So, uh, but I will, we're a little bit loud right now because my, my street is, is very busy. Uh, we are going to be turning on to a street that has a little bit less traffic. People are on their way to work right now. I'm going to take the day from home. Um, anyway, so. What, what, what have I, what does my morning look like? So the morning, despite being a bit uh, different of a time, uh, should basically look the same. So your alarm goes off after seven to nine hours of sleep, preferably closer to eight or nine hours of sleep, especially if you are doing resistance training. And you kick yourself out of bed. You just launch yourself out of bed. You're ready to get up. You go ahead and uh, get downstairs or go to your kitchen. 
and you are getting one tablespoon of salt in, uh, which will taste like crap, of course. One tablespoon of salt in, and then getting around 16 ounces of water just activates everything. Um, water lets uh, uh, room temperature. For any of you crazy people that can do cold, cold water in the morning, uh, perfect, go ahead. But room temperature water is gonna be the easiest for you to get down. Cool, we have our salt and our water in. Uh, go back, to, uh, open up your cabinet. Um, you are going to take a yo and bean tablet. This again helps with uh, our weight loss efforts. This is not a requirement, but helps with our weight loss efforts. And then uh, hopefully what you've done the night before is you have scheduled some coffee to be made or uh, maybe you have a cure cake up deal and you down a little bit of coffee. Um, I'll probably say, you know, if the coffee is going to be very hot, I, I don't need you guys doing any more than a cup um, or, or green tea, of course. So green tea is all, always an alternative. The other thing that so now we have our caffeine and we have, our water and we have our salt and now we are going to go to uh, put on our weather appropriate walking gear that you have laid out the night before um, but it's very cold where you are then uh, you know I, I would suggest some type of thermal gear I personally don't like to walk with a bunch of uh, stuff on over top and you will eventually get your heart rate beating enough to, to warm yourself up a bit. So get your uh, appropriate gear on, go and get a pair of shoes that is comfortable to walk in and you need to be out the door. So aiming point to be out the door is always going to be 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, I move slow in the morning. I'm sure other people move slow in the morning, but we are going to try to hustle and get out. Um, Walking directly out your door to your street is 100% fine. Um, I like to put some variety in my walks. I have a, about three parks that are about five minutes away from me. And I have, well, four that I kind of alternate between. Today I'm doing the more typical route of I'm just out my door and I'm walking. So... And you're going for 15 minutes if you're a beginner, half an hour probably intermediate, and then 40 plus if you're uh, really looking to get your activity level up. And we'll leave it at that for today. I will continue to uh, talk about that habit and basically repeat it every single time for new users. And I will continue to formulate that to be quicker and quicker for everybody because I so I'll take a minute or two and look at this. We're, we're eight minutes in. <laughs> anyway, so we got past that. Now I want to go into our monologues. So um, a lot of stuff racing in, in the head this morning. So let's, let's go ahead. One of the things I've heard about that I haven't really tried myself, I can try right now, is to start counting down from a number. Uh, let's try like two, uh, 300 and I'm going to let my thoughts settle, flow through and then start to find the clarity of thought and share with you what, it, what I have. So So I got about 25 counts in 
before I became a little bit more connected with my feelings and my awareness of what's happening now for me. So uh, the first thing that I started to feel is the sensation of the sun, a very warm and a very welcome sensation. Um, and my great appreciation for the sun. Um, and to, to even be able to be out here walking underneath it, uh, absorbing, absorbing, uh, basically radiation, right? But things that will, that will enable me to put my body in the right balance and uplift my mood. I have not been in enough sunlight this last week from conferences. I have been getting my steps in, but under pretty much fluorescent lights and in, inside buildings. So um, that's feeling wonderful. I'm also recognizing my muscles, especially my obliques and abdomen, my hip flexors, starting to slowly warm up. I'm recognizing um, I've normally eaten at this point, so uh, I'm a little past on that. So I'm recognizing my uh, my ghrelin showing up um, as feeling of hunger, and that feeling of hunger, that's okay. Um, my body's doing his best to make sure that I'm healthy and that he can do the best for me. Uh, I'll make sure that we get fed, we get back with a breakfast bowl. I'm uh, noticing the birds singing uh, despite all of the noise from the cars going by. Uh, I am wishing to hear from them more. Uh, I considered going to another quieter location this morning, uh, but there are quite a th few things happening today. I've been very busy this past week, so I didn't want to waste any time uh, with any traveling to go do my walk. There we go, a bird is being nice and loud for me. Thank you for your singing. I'm also noticing just how blue and silver the sky is today. And cool air and warm sun. There's not much else you can ask for. So, despite the stresses of my life right now, despite all the things piling on top of my to-do list, despite all the expectations I'm placing on myself, or that others may be placing on me, that there is, even as I walk down the side of the street with concrete, I have clear air, I have singing birds, I have trees, and I have wonderful clear skies. So I'm very grateful for this life. I'm walking by the school, so the kids are gone. I'll be sensitive to it, make sure that the camera is facing the other way, because um, I don't want any kids on camera without any type of permission. In fact, I think today I'm gonna go down the other way just because I know that the kids are out. 
just to make sure there's no trouble. Now we're in a crosswalk and I am thankful for not getting run over in the crosswalk. So today I feel like I'm more, more than most mornings, I'm definitely in like a gratitude feeling. And I've been pondering on really integrating gratitude into those first 15 minutes into a morning routine. So perhaps we have a gratitude session. But right now, where my mind is at has been a lot of gratitude. Here's where we don't have any, <laughs> have some gratitude. Um, I have a feeling for longing and missing a little bit my normal routine and schedule. Uh, this is one reason why you guys haven't haven't heard from me. I don't want to be the type to upload four YouTube videos and quit. Uh, but my schedule got a little insane. Um, knowing that I needed to get better and adjust the format of these videos, I did take a break for a second. Um, I haven't had a lot of time to plan for that. But I feel like this is going about where I had wanted. Um, I am feeling grateful for uh, pretty much being done with traveling. There's a chance I might have to go do something next week. Um, I think it's probably within my right to uh, say no to that at this point. Uh, since I have been traveling so much the last last month, I'd like to uh, get settled back into my normal routine a little bit more. I am going to go ahead and get my shoe tied. I think I've been critical of my shoes on videos in the past. Uh, this down. Oh. It's probably, lo it's looking all over the place. My gimbal. Looks like a little robot right now. So, uh, I am missing my routine, and I'm looking forward to getting back into it. I'm going back more into the uh, 9 to 5 style, for me rather, uh, six, 6 to six to 2 style of uh, my schedule. So, but we'll be there soon. Uh, so, look now... We're about to come up on 20 minutes. I think introductory, I gave you about eight or nine minutes before I got into this. So we're going we're gonna to monologue for a little bit longer yet. Um, one thing I've started recognizing that my brain works a little bit better on for releasing tension is, and it's harder to do when I'm talking, for once again, I'll get it figured out. Uh, is letting the tension out of your jaw. Even like you're going to feel. I didn't say, you're going to feel funky, but letting your jaw almost hang a little bit. But hang a little bit open. So it just. Because when you're going around like. Uh, but uh, releasing some of that tension. I think releasing the tension out of your face. Right now I feel 
a lot of the tension coming out of my face, uh, especially when the sunlight is hitting it. I'm not even trying to do that, but I think that's my body like almost releasing the tension, stretching its stretching its skin out and embracing embracing getting some sunlight. So, in fact, it's not so harsh. I think I'm just go ahead and take this hat off. See my bald ass head that needs to get shaved. I'm tracking problems. There I am. Um, just to open up, make sure the sun can get the top of my head as much revealed. It's still kind of cold out, so I don't have short sleeves on. But I probably could have feeling it now. Not as it get a little warm. So we're right over 20 minutes now. So generally, I would be done with uh, any of my monologuing and I would go into the next uh, topics of conversation which I kind of plan to be a little bit more scripted with, of course. I was going to go this way. Yep. All right, so we're also on our way back too, so we can be done with our our walk. But cool um, topics. So I didn't pre-prepare the topics, so we're going to be a little bit rambling, but some some fun stuff. So guys, strength foundations, which is my three day a week full body program. I've been designing and been testing out myself. Yes, I am working out. I am using the workout that I am <coughs> uh, showing you guys and, and assigning clients to. Crazy, I know, right? Um, has seemed to do been doing its job the last couple weeks uh, as far as maintaining muscle mass for me, not giving me uh, a lot of Stress and anxiety about going. I keep normally I'm training five or six days a week. Um, with the last month, I've been training using strength foundations for three days a week. Um, and I have maintained my strength. So uh, at a general maintenance style of diet that I'm on right now. So... What that normally will mean is somebody that wants to uh, get stronger, gain weight. They're going to have to eat a little bit more and then, then do the strength foundations. And for anybody that's more of a new person or a beginner, you should see plenty of progress uh, on, on a program like this. So I, uh, I've been working on getting it quicker and quicker to get the workout done uh, and I think what I'm going to be doing is uh, maybe on one of the Sundays where our gym is is very uh, you know there's just not a lot of people in there uh, especially Sunday mornings uh, running through strength foundations uh, showing you the movements showing you the uh, form associated with each uh, telling you lifting cues and then also giving you my little hints on how I would get things done as fast as possible with an appropriate amount of rest. Um, this is resistance training. This is strength. This is overall body. Um, it's what I'm going to recommend to anybody that starts on 
my uh, wellness programs. So, uh, it also tore me up quite a bit. Uh, the thing that I'm really been really been eye opening is the idea of using uh, deadlifting as a as a bodybuilding movement. Um, obviously, Romanian deadlifts. Uh, obviously, any form of stiff legged or um, B stance dumbbell style deadlift, but no, uh, the barbell deadlift being used as a as a bodybuilding hypertrophy based movement. Uh, after we hit the top set, that's that that has been tearing me up. Um, my especially this slow, slow on the eccentric. Um, I guess for would that be the concentric for that for that type of the folding in, um, but let's say sl slow on slow on the descent, uh, nice and fast on the ascent of the lift, squeezing your glutes, um, squeezing you know your quads, basically squeezing pretty much your whole lower lower body on the way up. Um, but then really going nice and slow, focusing on the uh, kind of what uh, people will call like the hip sled, which is uh, your hip's ability to move in a horizontal plane uh, back and forth and load itself. Um, but using that, that, that hip sled uh, throughout the deadlift in as smooth of a way as possible. Uh, it's really been messing me up. So I, I've been doing those at about a 60% uh, of my max uh, for anywhere from 8 to 12 reps. Normally I'd hit about 10 for all of them, and then it becomes very, very agonizing. So... That is, uh, that's been eye opening because I don't, I have not used that exercise. I've normally been using it as a strength exercise. And if I am going beyond the eight, the, an eight to 10 uh, rep range, we normally are doing them crossfit as a wad. Um, and not, not in a te technique that is particularly suited for time under tension. So, um, usually using a lot of floor bounce, going about as fast as possible, being as efficient as possible with using as little musculature during the movements I can get away with as possible. And that's a, <laughs> that's a CrossFit thing, guys. So, um, the other things that have really gone well is, um, just, those top sets, uh, as long as you approach them nice and serious, like you're definitely going to get the proper CNS stimulus to continue to grow. Um, one thing I'm going to have to almost teach my clients is, is how, to, how to lift heavy, how to lift hard. Um, and that's something that takes people a little while to do. Um, Part of it is a is a mental, almost a mental health exercise. Part of it's, uh, you know, I think you guys have gotten from me now that I'm, I'm not the type that. I think I follow this, uh, the Brian Watson, Jeff Watson, Watson fit or whatever like that. He does the uh, he just yells at you the whole time, telling you how, how uh, you suck because you're not rich and have four Lamborghinis in life. So I'm, I'm not that guy because I am, I, I, I'm not that guy. I haven't got where I've gotten as that guy. And I'm not trying to reach out to those people. Those people um, either A, are so far along in their life and they respond to that, that they, you know, want to be everything is possible to, they want to do everything possible to have a supermodel girlfriend and a Lamborghini um, and be, be, be shredded, uh, to all hell. And, you know, 
good, good for them. I can respect everybody and what they want to do in their life. There are portions of that life that I, that I sometimes would, would dream about and want. Uh, however, uh, I would rather spend my time realizing that people, 99% of people aren't those types. And I want to help want to help most of you the largest swath of you so um, maybe my level of knowledge my level of my own fitness is a six out of ten there are a lot of you out there that are at a three out of ten uh, and I can get you guys up to the six then we can eventually learn together and, and, and get where we need to go but um, a lot of you ha have families a lot of you are fighting against your own mental demons and the idea of shoveling even more on you especially like self-shame as is, is not a, is not a is not a good thing so i think shame shame could be useful for certain people um not necessarily like the uh type that thinks that you should never be ashamed of yourself i think that you you, you should but god there's a lot of people out here that are really just trying their best and they're being fed a lot of uh, bad information and they grew up with the wrong information about themselves, their career, their lives and, and their health. So um, I I don't I, I'm not particularly going to go at you guys in, in any of that sense. But there was a ramble. I don't I don't know where, where we're even going with that. Um, but we uh, we got done talking a little bit about strength foundations, how that was helpful. Uh, the combination as well is uh, if you guys are traveling for work, if you guys are at conference, um, standing, sitting, meet, meet, meetings all day, I think naturally as I see it now, as I've ex begun experiencing this more and more, um, unless you are, unless it's at a very, very small hotel, and you're not going to like some sort of uh, travel destination like like Las Vegas, uh, like Phoenix, like New York. Um, you actually are probably going to get most of your steps in, at least close to your six thousand, just naturally, as you as you travel between places, which is great. However, um, I think for your own mental health, your own clarity, and then also. <laughs> uh, just trying to fight back against the tide of you uh, maybe not doing your best uh, uh, eating, um, which is a whole nother topic of conversation. Uh, you should still go ahead and get your walks in on, uh, on, your, on your business trips. Um, I think naturally you'll end up about six, four to six. You get, maybe you can't sneak three away, Maybe you can't sneak a mega 40 minute walk, uh, but if you can get two 15 minute walks, that's awesome. Um, shit, make an excuse to go up to your room. Uh, and even that little walk, go get yourself uh, a protein bar, go get yourself uh, some yogurt. Try to sate yourself a little bit. So especially throughout the day so that when you, you get to that dinner with your client or you get to that dinner, um, you are not at a point where uh, your body is in binge mode. So that's one thing uh, I, I realized quickly. Um, one night I was definitely in binge mode. Uh, I did do protein drowning before it to uh, or, or during rather. So my strategy was simply, uh, we were at a steakhouse, uh, strategy was simply make sure I get the, all of the steak down. Um, and then, uh, prior to the steak being down, uh, we had a lot of vegetables brought out to us that were not bathed in, uh, seed oils, uh, dressings, toppings. So, um, lucky enough there that I was able to chew on some celery, onions, and, and carrots uh, prior to then going after that steak. And then having only very little left for 
uh, mashed potatoes because I I, uh, I did not that particular day I did not do any um, any of strength foundations so um, my body did not need so many carbohydrates uh, and I am not a person that's on keto uh, low carb is a great way for many people but pretty much the uh, the end the end game the reason why low carb is normally working for people the same as low fat bodybuilder diets is that we uh, we cut our calories down that's why you're losing weight so um got a good amount of walking in let let the uh left the potatoes alone uh just a, just a, a little bit of the potatoes right feel that butter taste in your mouth um and then for the most part uh when i got done if i was still hungry uh what i did is i i, I went and grabbed a grabbed a protein bar before i went to bed so um that's a topic of conversation uh, that I know is going to come up because of people traveling. Um, I do. I am crazy enough where I will prep my own food for travel, uh, but I'm experimenting with both because I want to experience both. Um, it's not something everyone's going to be able to do or want to do. Uh, you know, if you're going to go out for dinner with. Uh, with a with a client, they're just thinking, "Where's it? Yeah, I'm not eating because I have my eat my food back in my uh, back in my hotel." Um, it's maybe they'll respect you for it. That, that's possible, but uh, they they probably think you're kind of weird. <laughs> Anyways, it's good to be weird though. Um, I definitely do it when I'm when I'm just meeting with my company, but for. Uh, Meeting, meeting new potential prospects and things like that, for sure. I, I, I got I to gotta enjoy and dine with them. Does not mean I have to drink alcohol with them, though. That is where the foot will go down. Uh, so, yeah, we, we were talking briefly, or we are starting to talk about protein bars. I'm sure it's like, what are the protein bars that Justin is going to recommend? God. I'd say none of them, but really, I just have to settle back into the Quest protein bars just because they taste good. They do have fiber in them. They do probably have the most protein or something similar to their size. I don't love their ingredient list. Um, there's those Bear Bells protein that seems just a tiny little bit cleaner. Less fiber, more carbs, more sugar. So we're kind of at that spot that we are with uh, with a lot of things. Where what are we gonna what are we what are we going after? Are we going after the macronutrients, or are we trying to fight against our chemicals uh, that we're absorbing uh, in the environment? So uh, in our food and environment. So, uh, but here's where I like to distill it down, kind of shut everything up. Is um, it, it, use whatever tools necessary get you to your protein goal of the day, which for me is going to be advised as one gram of protein per pound of body weight, not 0.8, not lean body mass, which nobody has any fucking idea what their actual lean body mass is. You, uh, I just came across a video with medical professionals uh, the other day that we're advising you really only need 60 to 70 grams of protein. Fuck that. Um, I don't know why that's still going on. Um, you will not grow uh, at 60 to 70 grams of, of protein as an adult. Maybe if you're a four-year-old child. But um, whatever helps you get that protein in without you going over your, your caloric um, needs for the day. So, uh, like a protein box, right? Protein boxes, you go to a Starbucks, a protein box is going to have cheese. It's going to have nuts. Um, uh, might have salami or whatever like that. Normally those protein boxes are, are like, not focused on protein. 
It's more just protein mixed with fats and carbohydrates. Sure, you're going to go ahead and get yourself 30 grams of protein, but 40 or 50 grams of carbs and probably an equivalent amount of fats. Because, you know, cheese cheese has a lot of fat in it, um, except for like skinny cheese or whatever like that, skim cheese. Um, nuts have a lot of fat in it. Nuts are not a protein source to me. Nuts are more of a fat source just because most of their calories comprise is comprised of um, calories from fat. So that's a uh, pretty good indicator when most of your calories in the food are comprised from a certain macronutrient that that's the type of macronutrient source it is and it is not a a protein so but uh the the kind of little hacks i guess you could say that's going to be those quest protein bars pretty much everywhere has them get them at a gas station get them even at the uh at the airport um you can get them even in your hotel lobbies um, the other one, which isn't always available, uh, is going to be non-fat Greek yogurt. Uh, sometimes you can get this from the closest CVS or Walgreens. Um, of course, a grocery store if you can get there. Um, what I really like to do is use uh, Amazon Prime's Whole Foods delivery. Uh, you know, If you remember to do that. Uh, try to try to remember when you're on the plane you connect to the Wi-Fi go ahead and order it have it show up at your hotel I like to call the hotel as well and let them know that there's a delivery come and put it up in the room uh, because that person can also uh, go ahead and, and load the uh, items into your fridge uh, be aware of your amenities you might not have a fridge uh, but something new for me I, I walked into a place that had no fridge and I was like hey can I store these anywhere? They're like, like, there's this kitchen fridge or anything like that. And they're like, no, we'll bring a refrigerator up. They, they, they have refrigerators just on request. So no extra charge or anything like that. Um, refrigerators and microwaves. Um, so, so try that out the next time you're at a hotel and you walk in and you're like, shit, there's no refrigerator or no microwave. See if they have them on request. <sighs> so, um, because if you can uh, order, you know, go ahead and get yourself some non-fat Greek yogurt. Go ahead, and I like to use the uh, Mio packets. I know some of the things people will do is like crystal light packets. Um, Mio packets, in my opinion, they, they taste a little bit better, but get yourself Mio. Or um, something I was thinking about trying was maybe using the Element Salt electrolytes that uh, I like to use. Maybe I could put that in there. Try to keep those in water, but... Anyway, so we're uh, we're coming up on my apartment, so that's our walk for today. Uh, hopefully, there was something of value in it for you, um, and if there wasn't, there was a lot of value in it for me. So, have a great day. Make sure to like and subscribe. Talk soon.